In this video, I wanted to go into a little bit of detail on the stern Gerlach experiment. Uh, and so what this is saying is, so in the previous video when we talked about Larmor precession, I said that in a, mag in a uh, homogeneous magnetic field, so that's something where we have just sort of straight up and down magnetic lines that there is a torque on our dipole so we have a dipole that looks like this there is some torque that will cause it to spin like this but if we are in an inhomogeneous magnetic field then there is also a force on it so there is a force that will cause it to either move up or down depending on uh, our magnetic dipole orientation and the uh, and the orientation of the magnetic field lines and so the force is given by uh, by this right here so that's the force and then we're taking the gradient of the dot product of our our magnetic dipole and our magnetic field lines and so there's a little bit of explanation I wanted to give as far as like what a homogeneous and inhomogeneous magnetic field is. And so I actually have this where I'm going to go a little bit into uh, a couple of Maxwell's equations, in particular the Gauss's law and, uh, well, the one that sometimes is called Gauss's law for magnetism. And so we have here, this is uh, our our magnetic field right here, which is the same one as I had on here. So that is just this right here. And so for that, uh, for that, uh, I drew what this would actually look like. And so that is what I have right here. And so we see that uh, I have the north on the bottom here because we want our field lines pointing up so that they're pointing in the positive z direction so we have our our z right here so we want those pointing in the positive z direction uh, and so that is what this part of it is telling us so this part here is telling us that that the magnetic field gets stronger as we go up in the z direction. So this z right here uh, times this constant alpha tells us that as we go up our magnetic field is getting stronger. But we can't do this without uh, adjusting in the x direction as well, which is why we have this. And so this negative is telling us that when we are at positive x, so uh, on this side here, that uh, we have the field lines pointing inward and then so uh, when we are at the negative x they are pointing towards the positive because a negative of a negative is a positive so this is what our field will actually look like and so I wanted to explain uh, and this is going sort of on a little bit of a tangent into electrodynamics uh, or uh, I guess magnetostatics to be particular. Uh, th the reason we have to have this is because we can't have it be the case that uh, as we go from our our north here to our south up here, uh, so we have our magnetic field lines. We can't have magnetic field lines sort of appearing uh, in space right here so uh, in order to make it stronger up here than it is down here and so we actually have to have these uh, magnetic field lines sort of converging inwards and the reason for this is because uh, we can't have divergence in the magnetic field and so this over here this is Gauss's law and so the E is the electric field and so we see that this does allow divergence so when we sort of focus in on the exact center here we have sort of field lines that are sort of being generated here which is what an electric charge is is sort of a point where electric field lines are being generated and so uh, these ones pointing out would give us positive and so that would be like a positive charge these ones pointing inwards would be a negative so that would be like a negative charge but with magnets uh, so this is Gauss's law in the 
uh, in the uh, differential form there. This is uh, the sometimes called Gauss's law for magnets in the differential form here. And we see that the divergence, which is what this, uh, this nabla with the dot there means, has to be zero. And that means that if we, uh, if we sort of look at any sort of uh, part of space uh, where there's magnetic field lines, the number of magnetic field lines coming in has to equal the number going out. Uh, and, you know, sort of the reverse is also true. The number going out has to equal the number coming in. And so there's no sort of net uh, gain or loss of field lines the way we have up here where up here you know, the, their, the field lines are all going outwards. There's nothing coming in, and here it's all coming in and nothing coming out. And so that's why we have to have that uh, sort of other factor here for the, the x-axis. Uh, but we'll see that uh, in here in a little bit that the, the Larmor procession actually just kind of ends up canceling that out. Uh, and so that is... Uh, but we still need to account for that. And so I guess uh, just sort of a quick review what these stern gerlach experiments are is we have our two magnets here. So we have a magnet here and a magnet here. And we're actually shooting electrons or, you know, some sort of spin half particle through it. And some of them, when they go into this magnetic field, will bend upwards while other ones will go into this magnetic field and bend downwards. And that depends on whether it has a, a spin up or a spin down. Uh, and so we need this uh, inhomogeneous magnetic field in order to do that. Uh, and I will show why here in a little bit. And so that is essentially uh, uh, covers everything sort of up to here. Uh, well, actually, it covers everything further than that. So this uh, this is another image here, but this, as we see, is a little bit different than the, than the one we're working with, where we have the north on the bottom, and that's the larger one with the south on top. That's the smaller one. But, uh, but this is, you know, kind of just the opposite of that. So we would end up having uh, our our uh, magnetic field lines pointing downwards rather than upwards. But uh, the thing to notice here, so uh, this is often done with silver uh, atoms. So AG is silver. And so we see that this is causing the, the beam to split apart depending on which way they are pointing. And the reason they use silver is because it has this lone electron up here. So it has this unpaired electron up here which gives the uh, gives the atom an overall spin uh, and I'll actually talk a bit about that in the next video about sort of adding the spins up but we have it so that if we you know sort of add a spin up and a spin down that just ends up being zero spin and so we need this lone one up here and that will give us you know either a net spin up or a net spin down depending on the spin of that electron there uh, and so we have over here so we're looking at this so this is our our uh gradient of our of our uh dot product here of the magnetic dipole and the magnetic field lines and so this is just showing it uh, sort of explicitly so we have for the x we have our minus alpha x which just comes from this right here then uh, y we're not looking at so that ends up being zero and then we have our positive alpha z and our bz here in the z and so uh, what we're doing is we're just doing the dot product so this gets multiplied by that this gets multiplied by zero, so it ends up being zero. That gets multiplied by both of those. And so we end up with this here. So we have our our Z poly matrix uh, right here, and we have our Z poly matrix right here, and then our X poly matrix right here. Uh, so then I uh, factor some of these things out, so we end up with 
this for the X and the Z, and then this for our um, magnetic field lines. Then when we do the gradient calculation, which uh, is just doing this right here, so that's the gradient calculation. Uh, so we end up with uh, this. So we're taking the partial with respect to X, uh, the partial with respect to, uh, this should actually be with respect to Z right here. So this should actually be uh, Z right there, uh, because we're taking the partial with respect to Z with our Z. Uh, and so for each one, when we take the partial with respect to X here, we can uh, pull this out because it's constant. Uh, so the partial of X with respect to X is just one. So we end up with that. Uh, same thing with this, the partial of Z with respect to Z is just one. So we end up with that. And there is no Z here. This is just a constant. And so this just goes to zero. And so we are left with this. Uh, and remember the F is our force. So this is the function for our force. Uh, and so uh, with the Larmor precession, as I said, it oscillates back and forth uh, in the X direction. So it ends up just canceling out uh, this part right here. So the only force, which is the one we're interested in, is the one going up and down uh, because we're measuring on the on the Z axis because we want this to be, you know, either splitting the beam upward or downward. And so we are just uh, concerned with this Z here. So it's, uh, it's kind of helpful that this X uh, actually cancels out because otherwise we'd have uh, the beam sort of splitting in the X direction as well, which uh, would give us, you know, sort of like a, a circle or maybe more like uh, more like a, a cross like this or something. But anyway, we don't have to worry about that. So uh, so we have this as our as the force that it will feel, uh, and so we see that this has the the Z Pauli matrix, which uh, is just flipping our our particle either in the spin up or the spin down, and so we can look at the this uh, Stern Gerlach here. So once again, this is different than what uh, we were actually using, where we had the small north on the bottom or, or the yeah so we had the uh the large north on the bottom and the small south on top uh but it'll end up being the same it's just a matter of which one you assign as being spin up and which one you assign as being spin down that's pretty much the only difference uh that it will make and so this blue here is our beam of charged spin half particles it goes through this magnet and we see we have the with the beam splitting here and so this is telling us that if we didn't have a quantized spin we would uh, predict that we would see like a smear going on here because uh, you know you could have like partial spin up and partial spin down and things like that so it would actually split that way but we have this quantized spin so you actually end up seeing just uh, two spots showing up on your detector here uh, and so that is you know just uh, in virtue of the fact that we are actually quantized in our spin uh, and so this this figure here I just got from the Wikipedia on the uh, Stern Gerlach experiment uh, but anyway that is uh, sort of our look at the Stern Gerlach, Gerlach. Uh, once again, I, I'm bad at pronunciation. I've only ever seen the word written. So, uh, so this this experiment right here. So it's just looking at this experiment right here uh, in a little bit more detail. And so, uh, kind of the takeaway for this is just the way that particles interact in a in homogeneous magnetic field. And so instead of just having that torque, which just sort of spins our, uh, just sort of spins our, our magnetic dipole here, it's actually causing it to either go up or down. And so we can think about that actually. So 
if we have uh, like a strong, a sort of strong south up here and a weak north down here, which is sort of what we're trying to uh, trying to simulate here. So if we have a dipole that is this way, so we have our north right here and our south right here, we see that this is going to be attracted up towards that south right there because this north will be attracted to the south and this south, uh, this so the, the attraction of the south to the north will be weaker since the north here is weaker. But if we instead, so we still have our same setup here, if instead it's this way, and we now have our south here and our north here, we see that this south up here is going to repel this south down here more than this north down here will repel this north. And so we actually see a movement that way. And so that is why we want this inhomogeneous magnetic field is so that we end up getting these uh, attractions this dif this difference in the attraction in uh, repel and repellence repellent uh, of these magnetic dipoles. Uh, but anyway, so I hope you found this video uh, helpful in understanding this sort of important experiment in quantum mechanics, and I will see you in the next video.